Are you ready to get your laugh on? Make some noise. You've seen this next performer on Comic View, on The View. My name is Earl, all about Steve with Sandra Bullock. But most importantly, he's right here, right now, live and in color. Put your hands together for Bone Hampton. Yeah. Yeah. All right, all right. Good, 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 good. All right, all right. See, that's the way you come out when you ain't got no budget to pay Beyonce for her music. <laughs> so, I know. It is what it is. It is what it is. That's the hot new phrase right now. Everybody is always saying that. It is what it is. It is what it is. That's the new way of saying somebody about to take advantage of you. Okay? Don't nothing good ever comes with it is what it is. It's always something foul. Ain't nothing cute like, hey, here you a check for $2,500. For what? It is what it is. It ain't never cool like that. It's always something foul. Like you show up on a blind date. Uh, you supposed to be a woman. Bone. It is what it is. No, it ain't. Just give me your hand. That's all you need to do. That's probably the main reason I ain't got a girlfriend right now. That ain't why. Movie prices. That's why I ain't got no girlfriend. <laughs> Expensive movies have just ruined my dating life. Remember back in the day, fellas, when the movies was cheap, so you didn't really care if the date worked out? You know, she'd be like, Bone, I don't want to go to the movies with you no more. You too loud in country. I don't care. 450. Bye. <laughs> ain't nobody scared of you. My mama gave me $10. I got a dollar left. That's FOMO Games or Donkey Kong. You go to the movies nowadays, even popcorn costs $972. You be like, girl, if I spend this much money on you, you gonna see me again. Voluntarily or involuntarily. It is what it is. Cause you know, it's the thin line between flirting and stalking. <laughs> no, it is, because if a girl think you cute, she would never accuse you of stalking her. Brad Pitt can be hiding in your bushes at three o'clock in the morning, and y'all will be like, that's so romantic. <laughs> get low, Brad, get low. <laughs> Peekaboo. <laughs> I see you. I show up at your job with a dozen roses and a teddy bear. You're like, how you find out where I work? <laughs> well, it would have been a lot easier if you gave me your real first name, <laughs> Yvonne. Got me looking for Wendy over at the Walmart. <laughs> now her husband tripping. And I want the money back for them flowers I sent to her job. I know sometimes I take it too far. I'm an extremist. It happened when I was playing high school baseball because I either hit a home run or struck out. I didn't do nothing in between. I couldn't even get hit by a pitch. Coach was like, you either feast or famine. I'm like, I know, that's just the way I am. That's why I don't believe in jogging. <laughs> I either sprint or I lay down and take a nap. <laughs> I ain't gonna be in between. I ain't no fence straddler. Even the Lord say he'll spit you out if you lukewarm. You either on fire for him or ice cold. I'm like, that's right, Lord. That's why I'm mad at you about my looks. <laughs> you should have either made me look like Denzel Washington or Flavor Flav. <laughs> this in-between is killing me. Okay, I'm gonna need the people laughing to tell the people not laughing who Flavor Flav is. <laughs> so they can be in on the joke. I know, see I get caught up, I get too extreme on stuff. That's why living in LA kinda works for me cause LA is an extreme city. A lot of people are like, no, it's like Sodom and Gomorrah. Well, it's that too, but it's an extreme city. LA is very extreme. Whatever you say you are, that's what you better be. Because if you're not, they will get you. I mean, I'm a Christian, so I say I'm a Christian. They like, they catch me right when I walk out the front door. You're a Christian? Yeah, turn this water into wine. 
I said I love Jesus. I didn't say I was Jesus. <laughs> and I get nervous because L.A. got a lot of crimes. They got a lot of crimes. Like, I'm scared to death somebody going to try to steal my car. So I keep it on empty. You know what I'm saying? You ain't going to steal my car and my gas. I got insurance. I get the car back, but the gas just gone. You ain't going to be riding all over Mexico on my full tank of gas, listening to my music. Okay, I don't know what happened, but that joke usually works a whole lot better than whatever just happened in this room. I don't know if I wasn't enunciating the way I need to, but you ain't gonna make one of my good jokes sound bad on my DVD. So what we gonna have to do is probably do this joke over again, and I'm gonna have to set it up differently or something because that ain't gonna happen. And everybody like, you, what happened then? What did he do that lost them? Maybe he was speaking Greek and we don't understand it. No, I was speaking English. I don't know what happened, but we're going to do that again because I'm going to need a better response on that joke. I got some other jokes over here today, and I'm going to let y'all get away with that if y'all decide no, but not on that one. That's a very, very smart, clever joke. You, you steal my car on empty? That means when you steal my car, you can't go nowhere. That's the point. Steal my car, drive five, not even five minutes. You like, this boy done ran out of gas. <laughs> yes, get out my car. I got AAA, okay? I can get my car back home, all right? You can't get my car back home because you broke it and the remote control don't work, so now you can't get the gas can open. I didn't think I had to explain that much in Appleton, Wisconsin. <laughs> now, if I was in North Dakota, maybe I would have to do all this. Maybe I'm down to my cousins in Arkansas. I understand. I am in Wisconsin. That's Appleton. Y'all right next to Oshkosh. <laughs> um... I've been getting blessed in my career lately. I was uh, on a TV show called My Name is Earl, where I played a prison guard. Thank you, thank you. And I was on a show called Medium, where I played prisoner number two. <laughs> now a lot of people be like, how you play a prison guard and prisoner number two? That's because I take my glasses off. <laughs> and it makes me double-sided. See, with my glasses on, I can play a prison guard. Hey, Earl, you got to go to jail. Take my glasses off. <laughs> Prisoner number two. <laughs> like this, I can get a bank loan. <laughs> Rob a bank. <laughs> I just work with mine. I just work with mine. Uh, it's also in a movie called All About Steve with Sandra Bullock, where I play. Thank you, appreciate it. I played a security guard. <laughs> yeah, I had my glasses on. And uh, I think I'm getting typecast. <laughs> That's what I think's going on. And the cool thing about it was, I'm, my scene was with Sandra Bullock and I'm trying to pretend like she ain't Sandra Bullock. Okay, when she did Speed, I was eight years old. So I'm like, you is Sandra Bullock. And I'm supposed to play like we went to high school together? And so the day I worked, there was Sandra Bullock and the dude that played Steve, Bradley Cooper, dude from The Hangover. So they A-list actresses, actors, right? And so I didn't know that I was the only other actor working that day. So, you know, the A-list actors and actresses, they, you know, they picked them up in Lincoln Escalade, uh, Navigators and Escalades, you know, and then us C-minus people, they give us a skateboard <laughs> and be like, you get here however you can and you better be on time. You know, they got trailers and dressing rooms. They like, you figure out how to get changed on that skateboard. That's what you do. We'll throw you a towel to cover up some stuff, but that's about it. I didn't know that I was the only other actor working that day. So it was easier for them to raise me up to their A-list stuff than them to create a C-minus stuff for me. So I go to hair and makeup. They're like, Bone, you need to go to hair and makeup. I'm like, all right, cool. So I'm sitting in the chair and they blah, 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 just the hair and makeup people, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, uh, so Bone, what's your stripper name? What's my stripper name? I thought I was doing a movie with Sandra Bullock. What is this? They're like, no, 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 what it is is you take your first pet name and then you take the first street you grew up on name and that's your stripper name. I'm like, oh, well, mine is Butch Lulu. <laughs> 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 
And then I hear a voice over here say, that's the funniest stripper name I ever heard. Was that Sandra Bullock? Did she just say my stripper name is funny? And I didn't have my glasses on, so I couldn't look in the mirror to see what's that, huh? But see, I can't see good this way, but I'm good like this. So I just use my peripheral. I was like, that is Sandra Bullock in the makeup room with me. I'm about to get fired. I'm not supposed to be in here at the same time she in here. And then I called my mama. Mama Sandra Bullock just said, I got the funniest stripper name she has ever heard in her life. You know you make the story better. She said, in all the years of working in Hollywood, she ain't never heard nobody with a name that funny. And my mama was like, what you doing with a stripper name? <laughs> mama, that ain't the story. The story Sandra Bullock said. Who is Sandra Bullock? Did you go to high school with her? You know what, mama? I'm, you taking all the fun out of this. You done took all the fun out of doing this. And I don't even know what to do. No, mama, hang up on you. Okay, mama? Get my makeup done. Yes, I want red. So now we're doing the scene. I'm doing the scene with Sandra Bullock. Now, here's the thing. I got one line. That's what I do. I say one line. When I was on My Name is Earl, I had one line. When I was prisoner number two, I had one line. In the Sandra Bullock movie, I had one line. Apparently, something declines in my acting skills when I say two lines. I don't know what's going on, but apparently, Earl, you got to go to jail, it's fine. But when I say, and he say, how long? And I say 10 days, they're like, cut, 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 <laughs> cut. What, what happened, what happened? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, we just gonna have to cut you back to one line. So I had one line with Sandra Bullock, and I was the security guard. She was on my uh, sidewalk thing. She was on my bridge, and I was like, you got to get off my bridge. And so she, I was like, hey, only media here. That's all I had to say. Hey, only media here. And then Sandra walked down. I was like, hey, only media here. And she was like, who? Uh, that ain't in my script. <laughs> and I be John Brown if you're going to get me fired because you ain't read your script, Miss Sandra Bullock. And she's looking at me like, keep talking. I said, only media up here. And she's like, show me her past. And I'm like, oh, okay, uh, but you need to go down there with your friends. With who? I'm like, you quit doing that. I know you finna get me fired. I ain't supposed to be saying all this. I say one line, that's what I do. Cause see, I done saw people get fired before for trying to create stuff. I also did a show called Less Than Perfect. It had Zach Levi, Sarah Rue, and one of my best friends, Sherry Shepard's on there. And so I had one line. And so when I got it, I knew I had seen people get fired weeks earlier because they tried to do something cute. Be like they, they're on Tuesday. I come Wednesday. I'm like, where Ted at? Oh, uh, yeah, Ted tried to do some Ted stuff, and Ted is gone. All right, so my little line was Sarah Rue come up and I'm working at a bakery and she say, I'm here to pick up a cake with Denzel Washington on it, topless. And I say, is it preacher's wife Denzel or training day Denzel? That's all I'm supposed to say. And I say it just like that, nice and flat. Flat don't get you fired. Is it preacher's wife Denzel? training day Denzel. That's all. So, I'm cool. The director love me. Great job, Bone. You're doing exactly. So, Zach Levi, the guy that played Chuck on the NBC show Chuck, Zach Levi, good friend of mine, he's happy I'm on the show. He done see me do stand-up. He know I'm loud in country. So, he like, I know when I see Bone, he gonna be, is it preacher's wife Denzel or training day Denzel? That's what he thinking he finna get, right? He come down and say, come on, Bone, do it, do it. Is it preacher's wife Denzel or training day Denzel? He ran up on me, what is wrong with you? I'm like, what? He like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm trying to not get fired. That's what I'm doing. He like, but you're not being Bone. I'm like, right, cause Bone probably gonna get fired. He like, but they not gonna get to see you and understand why you so funny and they just gonna forget about you. You have to be bone so they can understand why they need to bring you back. You need to put something on this so they can understand it. So I'm like, uh, look dude, I'm gonna talk to Sherry because I don't trust you right now. You're trying to get me fired on the side. So Sherry come and Zach explains, Sherry like, all right, you know, put a little something on it. So 
We do it. Oh, okay. Da, 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 da. Is the preacher's wife Denzel or training day Denzel? Director's like, all right, cool. Cut, cut. Hey, you need to do What's wrong with you? I'm like, what? What are you doing? What Zach had, Zach told me to put, I don't know what I'm doing, Daddy. I don't know. He said, you better say these lines the way I told you to. Okay. And then I went and beat Zach like he stole something. <laughs> don't you ever do that to me again. I was so mad at him. And I'm like, Sherry, you my friend. How you let this happen? She's like, I don't know, Bone. I got caught up. <laughs> but then she made it up to me. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about Sherry Shepard, who is one of the co-hosts of The View. Okay? That's my best friend. And so they had best guy friends week on The View. And she was like, okay, Bone's my best guy friend. He going to come co-host The View with us. So I got to co-host The View. Now, this is what, thank you, thank you, thank you. It was really, really cool. We was in the Hot Topics room. Okay, if you never seen The View, uh, part of what they do, they do these Hot Topics. Basically, it's current affairs and all four of them sit around and they just talk about it from their uh, view. So you got a liberal, you got conservative, you got black folks, you got... That's pretty much it. You got liberals, you got conservatives, you got black folks. That's really... <laughs> and then when Barbara on there, you got an old... Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> cut that, cut that. When Barbara on there, you got a very uh, sophisticated, proven, one of the greatest journalists ever in the world. You see I'm trying to get back on the show? Because y'all looking at me like, what happened to the jokes? You don't joke about the boss. You joke about the rest of them, but not about the boss. And so I'm sitting there, and one of the hot topics, one of the current events was Michelle Obama had went to a second grade school in Arizona, and one of the girls was like, hey, my mama ain't got her papers, and we hear y'all kicking people out the country that ain't got their papers. <laughs> and so the story was, the hot topic was, we was trying to take it to, you know, how do you feel about people getting kicked out the country, don't have papers, would you tell? But my mind went to, wait a minute. Why does your daughter in second grade know you ain't got your papers? That's way too much information for a kid to know. Now she all stressed out in class, cause I come from a need to know family, okay? Uh, I didn't know my mama's first name till I was 25. She'd be like, uh, my name is mama. That's what you need to know, mama. When the teacher asks you, you say mama. I still don't know if my mama got her papers. <laughs> so it was just, a, it, it really was a, a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful experience. And so with all this experience that I'm now getting on TV, I'm to the point where I feel like I want to get my own show. I want to host my own show. Okay? You know what you think? You think? So I think, you know, I would host a show, something like, I call it Last Christian Standing. It's where we take about 10 Christians, put them all in one church, and then tempt them every week with sin <laughs> and see who get voted after church. <laughs> you know what I'm <laughs> we just going to go down the list. Envy, slothness. I'd be like, well, what happened when we get the gluttony and then the host get cut off? <laughs> I mean, what are we going to do then? You know, because gluttony ain't high on my sin value chart. You know what I'm saying? Glutt gluttony ain't up there with killing babies and selling drugs. All right? Gluttony down here with stealing paper clips from the job, making too many copies at Kinko's and not paying for it. That's, that's where I put gluttony. I ain't really tripping on that. that. Ain't no big deal to me. You ain't even got to pray real hard to get forgiveness for gluttony. That's when I'm, Lord, I'm sorry. Just keep it moving. Keep it. And the problem is, cause God trying to talk to me about doing stuff in moderation. He like, Bone, you got to start doing stuff more in moderation, you know. And I thought he was talking about the big things. I didn't think he was talking about gluttony. He like, just cause you can eat six pieces of chicken, don't mean you supposed to eat six pieces of chicken. He like, Bone, how about three? I'm like, how about four and two side orders? <laughs> work with me, Lord, I work with you. I need some Popeye's grace up in here. 
And that's when I realized I struggle with food more than I struggle with anything else. I mean, if I go to my hotel room and there's a woman in there, ain't supposed to be in there, it is easier for me to say, hey, put your clothes on. Get out of here. Go home. Have a Bible study. <laughs> Believe the pizza. <laughs> hey, that's for me. Gotta find me a new church because uh, my pastor too young. I mean, I ain't got nothing against young pastors. I just need a pastor with a little bit more life experience, a little bit older, make sure, you know, he can handle me because when I go confess my sins, I don't need him being all amazed at what I done did. <laughs> now tell me again what you did, bro. I ain't telling you again. I barely told you the first time. I'm just trying to figure out how you get all that in the trunk of your car. <laughs> Don't you worry about it. You need to tell me this too shall pass. No, I got to call the bishop because I ain't nothing. This over my head. That's why I need me a real pastor, a pastor that's done live life. I need me a pastor on parole. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I need a pastor with some prison tattoos, got an ankle bracelet, got restraining orders in two or three cities. Need me a real pastor. Some of y'all got real quiet on that one. <laughs> kind of church you go to? It's just jokes. I know. <laughs> Did you just translate what that was to him? He didn't know what an ankle bracelet was. I know that made the joke pretty black when I said ankle bracelet. Boy, y'all get quiet when I say black. <laughs> y'all like, did he say black? I thought y'all was called African Americans. <laughs> I'm black. <laughs> Call me black. Because when you say African American, I be looking for Akeem Olajuwon to come around the corner. <laughs> Who African? My mama from Texas. <laughs> I'm black. We still joking, just jokes. Maybe I need to put some more Christianese on it. <laughs> Calm the room down. You know, we love our Christianese as Christians. Ooh, we love to do that. Talk that Christianese so everybody know how sanctified we are. <laughs> Ooh, how you doing? I'm blessed and highly favored. You couldn't just say you doing good? You wouldn't know how sanctified I was if I just said that. How you doing? I'm just waiting on the Lord. I'm just waiting on the You single for longer than you wanted to be? That's exactly what's going on. That's, that's exactly what's going on. And he said, I can't say that no more, so I'm just waiting on the Lord. I'm just waiting on the Lord. We even got our own Christian curse words. Rebuke. That's our Christian curse word right there. I rebuke you. I rebuke your mama. I rebuke your grandmama. I rebuke your baby daddy. Wait a minute. It is what it is. <laughs> I know. I told you sometimes I take it too far. Too far, too far. Now, some of you may have seen me in some previous stuff, and uh, you're always trying to figure out, Bone, you done lost a lot of weight. Lost a lot of weight. What happened? Uh, I got sugar diabetes. That's what happened. And the doctor said, uh, you can either lose weight or lose your leg. What you want to do? And I was like, uh, I'm going to let the cheesecake go. That's what I'm going to do. I do stand-up comedy. I need my leg. <laughs> a 
apparently there was something wrong with my delivery and nobody else realized how funny that was except you. And I appreciate you seeing past my blown delivery and seeing the humor and the fact of me saying I do stand-up comedy, I need my leg. I don't know what happened to the rest of them. They just act like it was nothing. You put it together greatly. You must have went to Harvard or something like that. You must be dealing with a bunch of public school kids over here because they just, if I don't, uh, then it's like, it ain't funny. It ain't funny. I'm like, no, I need my leg. I do stand-up comedy. Uh, uh, that's kind of cute, but no. No, 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 no. Not from you, Bone. From you. We want pow out. That's, that's what makes it funny for you. You don't just get to say words. And the problem is, everybody in my family has diabetes, except nobody ever talks about it. I just thought everybody had an uncle with one leg. <laughs> I'm like, you ain't got no uncle with one leg? Your family must be dysfunctional, huh? Yeah, I got an uncle with one leg, and three in prison. But we say two of them went away to college. <laughs> we gotta keep our family name feeling good about ourselves, so. That's what we gotta do. And then people always trying to get me to wear that bracelet. Like, you need to wear that bracelet since you got diabetes. I'm not wearing no bracelet, okay? Because I ain't gonna tell nobody I got diabetes before I tell somebody I got diabetes. <laughs> now they trying to regulate me, talking about, oh, you want some cake? Oh no, you got that bracelet, you can't have no cake. <laughs> Wait a minute, I'm grown! You better bring me some cake! You let me decide if I want some cake. You don't know, I might have fell off the wagon today. You just have my insulin shot ready, that's what you do. And most people have like type one, type two diabetes. My doctor was like, you got like type 58 diabetes. If you even look at another bowl of ice cream, I don't know what to do with you, boy. Some of y'all see, y'all getting all quiet, feeling bad for me cause I got it. You ain't got to feel bad, I earned my sugar diabetes. Trust me, the doctor was like, this is crazy. I'm like, I know. That's why I came to see you. I need some help. So when I went to the doctor, I didn't know what was wrong. I just was getting tired, couldn't stand up, and I had to go to the bathroom a whole lot more than any normal person ever supposed to have to. And I don't know if you know, but that's part of the side effects of diabetes is that you got to go. And when you got to go, there's no hold it to the next stop sign of red light. It's like, when you got to go, you jump out a moving car to go find a bathroom because you got to go. You ever see a grown man and he is running like he is running for his life and you don't see a police? He probably got diabetes and he's trying to get to the restroom before he really embarrasses himself as a grown man because it don't give you no warning. You just like minding your own business. You're like, oh, shoot, wait a minute. Woo! It's, it's not fun. It's not fun. I'm just, it's, it's not fun. So when I went to the doctor, the doctor was like, oh, you're a diabetic? I'm like, I ain't no diabetic. He's like, uh, yeah, you a diabetic. So I called my little brother, because my mom's a diabetic, and she had a stroke from it about 12 years ago. So I called my little brother. I'm like, man, you ain't going to believe this. What? I'm a diabetic. For real? Yeah. What was your sugar? 425? He was like, and you still standing? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, why? Well, you know, Mama's was 375 when she had her stroke. Oh, Lord! <laughs> I'm 50 points beyond our family, Grace! Oh, no! I can't! The doctor rushed in the room. What's wrong? What's wrong, mister? I got sugar diabetes. What you think? What's wrong? He's like, calm down, calm down. You can control it with proper diet and exercise. That's white people diabetes! <laughs> I'm black. You got to cut my foot off. My friends be like, why do you call it sugar diabetes? So people know what kind of diabetes I got. What do you mean? He's like, it's not called sugar diabetes. What is it called? Just diabetes. Then how, how do people know not to give me sugar? <laughs> and the thing about it is it makes sense to me. Sugar, diabetes, bone, don't fool with sugar. Don't eat cookies, cake, pies, ice cream. That's what I thought. And my friend saw me eating some Popeye's chicken. Told me, I thought you was a diabetic. 
I am. What's the problem? What you eating that fried chicken for? Because I got sugar diabetes, not fried diabetes. <laughs> Duh. I just want to be a good parent, like my parents. Uh, my mom is from the city, and my dad is from the country. Anybody else grow up with mixed parents? <laughs> Nobody, just me. I mean, I didn't know what to do with bologna. I'm like, are we going to fry it and put barbecue sauce on it or roll it up and stick a toothpick in it? What are we doing? <laughs> Somebody help me. I am confused. I'm a mama's boy, I know I'm a mama's boy, ain't got no shame in my game of a mama's boy. That's cause mamas do stuff that daddies don't even think about doing, okay? And I'm talking about from day one, all right? Mama will wipe your snotty nose with her shirt if she have to. You can't pay your daddy to mess up his shirt. Be like, you see the boy nose running, use the shirt, you out your mind. I got this from Coles. Should have wiped no snot on this. That's a mama's love for you there, right there. Mama love will protect you. Mamas protect their kids at all costs. Daddy think everything, teach them how to be a man. Mama don't let nothing happen. You can be in the alley about to get jumped by some crips and bloods, and your daddy be like, yeah, put some hair on your chest. Put some hair on your chest, boy. You better, matter of fact, give me the phone. Give me the phone so I can tell them your weakness. I can tell them. So you can be stronger, boy. It'll help you. It'll help you. That's why every time a dude get in the NFL, he always on there, hi, mama. I love you, mama. Daddy, I don't even care. I don't care. He let me get beat up in the alley. Mama's love. My mama's like my best friend. I just don't understand why the rest of y'all think something wrong with clapping at that. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Making them feel crazy. Yeah, ain't everybody gonna clap for the, ain't, ain't nobody clapping back there. Well, I love my mama. I don't know what y'all going through. I know, I feel bad now. Y'all make me drink more water than I'm supposed to be drinking. When three people clap, I feel bad for them. Look at that. Nah, my mom, my mom is cool as ice water. She supported everything I did all the time, especially when I was playing high school football. She was there at every game. The only problem was she was the only one there at every game. And my mama is louder than me. So she, see, mama? Scared me for a moment. I'm like, my mama can't fly. I'm like, how you get the apple to? <laughs> Baby, I told you, I support you wherever you are. <laughs> my mama be at every high school game. That's my baby. That's my baby. You hit him, baby. You hit him. That's my baby. Just sack you. I'm like, mama, you can't be yelling, that's my baby, and I'm playing defense. And the trip about it was, we had a play, I played offense and defense because we had a little bit of school, so I had to do everything. And so we had a fourth and short, and we trying to figure out what to do, and my mama yelled out, just give it to my baby, he'll get it. <laughs> and we all look like, you don't think the other team gonna know who your baby is? <laughs> and he the only black dude on the team? That's my mama, though. That's my mama. And I was blessed enough to play college football. Uh, the problem is I went to a Division I school, you know, like the University of Wisconsin, USC, Texas. Uh, but I should have went to a Division 12 school is what I should have <laughs> did. Because at the Division I school, the kicker was bigger than me. And so I was playing third string defensive line. Well, I was playing fourth string, but the second string got on academic probation. 
So that bumped me up to the third string. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I didn't get into the game unless we were losing by 50 points. And we was playing Texas A&M, and we were losing 65 to 3. So the coach like, Hampton, get in. I'm like, for what? <laughs> I don't want to get in there. I'm just here for a scholarship. That's all. I don't care nothing about getting there. You better get in the game. It's a minute and 30 left. I'm like, well, let the clock run out. What I got to go out there for? I get out there, the dude that was lined up against me, the offensive tackle was 6'7", 322 pounds. He wore cleats with no socks. He hit me so hard, I wanted to press charges. I'm like, what is wrong with you? He's like, man, I'm just playing football. The game is over. If you hit me like that one more time, I'm going to shoot you. I don't even know if we got a gun, but I'm going to find a gun, and I'm going to shoot you because this is ridiculous. Who are you trying to impress? I got nobody over here to impress. They know you finna blow me off the line. Oh, man, it was crazy. That's when I learned how to lose my helmet at, at halftime. Whenever I see the scope get, what is it, 45 to 12? You know what? I need to lose my helmet before I mess around and get put back in this game. And I'm not getting hit like that no more. This don't make no sense. My mama taught me better than this. And then my daddy, he thought I felt bad. He'd give me a speech every week. I know it's hard for you to be over there on the bench and not get in the game. I know it's just killing your spirit. Yes, daddies killing my spirit. It's just killing my spirit. And I mean, you know, we got to do something about this because, you know, I know that's going to affect you. Don't you call that coach. You better not call that coach. I am fine over here. Then my mama wanted to get one of them t-shirts that said Bones Mama with my number on it. I was like, Mama, don't you get that t-shirt? You going to be embarrassed. You going to really be embarrassed, Mama. The mother parents gonna be like, where your son at? Oh, he down there talking to the cheerleaders. <laughs> Drinking all the Gatorade. <laughs> telling jokes. <laughs> college experience was something though, boy. I learned the worst thing I ever learned in life going to college, dropping a class. Oh, that was the worst thing. For those of you that may not know, when you go to college, if you don't like a class, you can just quit and they don't hold it against you. I'm like, wait a minute. If I don't like what's happening, I can just quit and it's called dropping a class? Yeah. I'm like, okay. Now, gotta be honest. The first time you do it, it's very detrimental. It's hard. You feel like a quitter. Cause you like, no, 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 I'm not gonna quit. I'm gonna stick it out. I mean, the teacher told me, teacher, the professor, came to me and said, Bone, I suggest you drop this class. <laughs> because the best you can do is a F minus. <laughs> I just don't think you are cut out for microbiology. <laughs> you sure that, that's what I need to do? <laughs> yes, <laughs> okay. I ain't never quit nothing. I, I guess I better try. After that, it's easy. It don't even affect you no more. I mean, you walk into the classroom, you be like, does he got a bow tie? Oh, no, I can't learn from no teacher with no bow tie. I'm dropping this class right here. Please, come back to this later. Mm. Great thing about college, man, you meet friends for life because you meet people from all over the world, all over the country. You get to meet different people. And I have figured out, this is what I got in my life. I got three types of friends. I got the kind of friends that if we go to the club and I go to the restroom and I come back out and he in a fight, I would immediately just start slanging, throwing, throwing for him because I know he has done everything in his power to avoid this fight. 
He is the type of person that will take two, three licks before he retaliates. He is that type of person. Fighting is not in his vocabulary. He has exhausted everything. So I ain't even got to question what happened. Something has went wrong and he could not avoid this. I was just coming out. Bow, don't be fighting my friend. <laughs> then I got the second kind of friend. Go to the restroom, come back here in a fight. I'm going to help him. But there's a good chance he did something to help this fight move along. And I'm going to help him because he's a good guy, but I'm pretty sure when we talk about it later, I'm going to be like, well, why did you think that was a good idea? (laughs) Then I got the third type of friend. I go to the restroom, come back, he's fighting. I'm going to have to stand there and evaluate this situation for a while. Because he might actually deserve what's happening to him right now. And I don't need to be getting in God's way of trying to teach him a life lesson. So I'm going to sit back and be like, hold on. Hey, did you see what happened? Okay, Yeah, he did. Okay, that's what I thought. That's, that's what I did. Yeah, he, okay, yeah. No, that's my friend. That's my friend. Yeah, I'm going to take him to the ambulance when we get through. But I'm not getting involved in that because he got to learn eventually. So I think you got to choose your friends wisely. I come from a neighborhood where I was one of the few people, not only just to get out of high school, but to go to college, graduate from college, and create a career on TV. Well, if some other folks got on TV, um, (laughs) just not the way I did. And so now what it does, it affects when I go home and I see old high school friends, I have to be careful how, you know, friendly I am with them. Because, like, one of my good friends, one time I went home, my boy was like, hey, man, you know, uh, so-and-so looking for you. I would like to say his name. It would make the joke funnier. But uh, he actually steal DVD players a lot, so there's a good chance he could see this. <laughs> so I'm going to keep his name out of it. And he's, I'm just, he gonna be so and so for this particular DVD. <laughs> and he say, so and so is looking for you. He done heard you done been on TV. I'm like, oh, okay. He's like, hey, don't let him find you though. I'm like, why? Cause he steals DVD players and sell them for $10. <laughs> what he selling them for? Um, cause he was scared to say, cause he didn't want him finding him. Me, you told Bone. I steal DVD players and sell them for crack money. Why did you tell Bone that? So he was scared, and I just said he steal DVD. We're going to have to cut that part because I don't, I don't need the drama of uh, him. Uh, I was watching Cops one night for laughs. You know, I was like, oh, this is funny. Look at I went to high school with him. This, I don't even know what to say. Uh, so what happens is that when I go home, I'm scared that I might see one of them walking down the street and be like, hey, man, you need a ride? And he's like, yeah, I sure do need a ride. And we ride, and I'm like, why does it feel like the police is following us? <laughs> because you are now driving the getaway car. That's why. And I don't need that kind of drama in my life, so I just go visit people in Appleton. Love it. I have a lot of um, different, I don't know why it keep being funny when I come up here and drink water. (laughs) Is there something else going on I don't know about? Come on, because you will tell it. I know you will. (laughs) So you tell it. What, what? What's happening when I'm drinking water? It's just funny that I'm drinking water? So I can just throw all the jokes away, just keep... (laughs) Going back for a drink some water, okay? Huh? That's what I do. <laughs> that was funny about it. <laughs> so let me get this straight. I done went home, I done flew to Canada talking to comics, trying to tweak this so it'll be good. And you saying all I had to do was just lay a water bottle down and could have got the same effect. Okay. Oh, it's the repeat. 
One time ain't funny. 17, that's funny. Okay. Y'all just gonna laugh at that? I've been up here working all night trying to make it happen and then she just throw it out there and y'all, ah, oh, now that's comedy right there. And now you think that's it. You like, I should be a comedian. Look, I got a bigger laugh than him. I rebuke you, I rebuke your table, I rebuke... In Jesus' name. I know we get carried away with that, boy. We love thinking that's going to make everything okay. I saw a Christian karate class. I'm like, dude, what is Christian karate? When we break the bricks, we break it in the name of Jesus. Ha! In the name of Jesus! And you think that make it Christian? Just because you say in the name of Jesus don't make it Christian? You can't rob a liquor store? In the name of Jesus? You can't be like, give me all your money in the name of Jesus. Oh, I know that wasn't mean enough for y'all. Hold on. Give me all your money in the name of Jesus. I'm behind on my tithes. <laughs> I've had the luxury of being able to work in all kind of different diversity of crowds. And a lot of my friends ask me, how do you be able to work in such different crowds? You work black crowds, white crowds, black church, white church, comedy clubs. What? You know, we just, I can only stay in my lane. I can't do a black church. I can only do a white church. I'm like, um, it's kind of like music, church music. You know, you might hear some black gospel in a white church, but you probably ain't going to hear the Gaithers in a black church. Here's the problem. The white church music, y'all too happy. That's just really what it comes down to. I mean, Lord, I lift your name on high. Jesus, you're the lover of my soul. In a black church, there is somebody sitting there trying to figure out how they're going to pay their rent the next week. There is somebody got a sister on crack that keep trying to borrow money from them all the time. You got to sound like somebody is jabbing you in a kidney with an ice pick when you sing black gospel. That's why we still climbing up on the rough side of the mountain. You got to sound like somebody beating you across your knee with a baseball bat. Ah! That's black gospel right there. That's, that's black gospel. Whatever he going through, I feel that same thing. Whatever it is, I can feel. I can feel. It's funny because uh, most of the white people didn't know if they could laugh at that. Y'all like, that's what we be thinking, but we don't want to offend nobody. I know. When I say it, it's funny. If Brian said, he gonna get in trouble. <laughs> it is what it is. It really is. See, that's the other thing I hate about the phrase, it is what it is. Because people act like it's a get out of jail free card. You know, like, it is what it is. I ain't got to explain nothing else. It's like, no, that ain't no get out of jail free card. I ain't got to say nothing else. I told you all I'm going to say, and it's done. I'm like, what if that was around in the biblical days? Can you imagine that conversation with Mary and Joseph? <laughs> Joseph like, Mary like, Joseph, I got to tell you something. What? I'm pregnant. 
No, you ain't. Yes, I am. Who baby is it then? Because we ain't did nothing for you to be pregnant. It's the Lord's baby. How is it the Lord's baby? Because it was an angel came and told You know what, Joseph? It is what it is. <laughs> Poor Joseph. <laughs> I like this stage because it's nice and big enough to hold me. <laughs> no, because I'm a big dude and I have to be concerned about this. Brian is a little dude. He ain't got to worry about that. I have to be worried about this. Y'all get quiet. Don't make fun of yourself for being big. I'm cool with being big. I've been this big since I was 16 weeks old. <laughs> I just came out of my mama. Mama, give me some biscuits and gravy. carried it on. I got a one-year-old son and um, I know he my son because he already 5'10", 185 pounds. <laughs> and his weight is deceiving. People don't realize. They see him, they be like, oh, your son's so cute. Can I hold him? And when they grab him, I be looking at him in about 10 seconds. They trying to figure out how to give him back to somebody because they need to start buckling. Now, I'm like, give me my son before you drop him. Too, too ashamed to tell me he too heavy for you. I know he heavy. He me. <laughs> I like the way I just get a roar out of here from somewhere. Like y'all laugh and then I hear ha ha ha. I'm like, did you just think it was funny? Or you was like, mm, I don't know how I want to laugh at it. Ha <laughs> ha, that's what I'm going to do. That's cool. That's cool. Uh, I know some of y'all are like, man, you keep going over there looking at something. Uh, I have a couple of DVDs out already, and this is a new one. And I wanted to make sure that I wasn't just putting the same jokes on the new DVD. So y'all have two DVDs with the same stuff on it. <laughs> Talking about, what did he try to do, a comedy remix DVD? <laughs> it's the same jokes. Because you know how, that's how the music people get away with putting out the same CD for 10 different times. Talking about, it's the remix. No, it ain't. It's the same song. No, it ain't. Lord, I lift your name on high. Remix. Lord, I lift your name on high. It's the remix. Lord, I lift your name on high. It's the same song. Now nah, we remix this. So, need to do a better job with my notes. Um, simply because... Uh, I hate to read, and I get tired of people always trying to make me feel bad because I hate to read. Man, what do you mean you hate to read? I hate to read. I don't like to read, okay? Why do you mean you don't like to read? Why you don't like to read? I don't like to read because I'm a boy, okay? How about that? Okay? You don't never hear a bunch of dudes talking about reading. We ain't got no book club. You know what reading to us is? Sports Illustrated. That's reading to us. ESPN, that is reading to us. You give us a Sports Illustrated with no pictures in it. Watch Sports Illustrated go out of business. Can't stand to read. That's why I don't like movies with subtitles. I'm like, I ain't going to pay to go read. I go in a movie, it got subtitles. I walk right back out. Oh, I'm not finished. What's wrong? Uh, you got to read. That's what's wrong. This ain't Barnes & Noble, this is an AMC. <laughs> I wanna read. That's why it messed me up when The Passion had subtitles. I'm like, how you gonna walk out of The Passion of Christ and not look like a, the Antichrist? <laughs> I mean, you go, oh man, this guy subtitles, I'm gone. People mumbling, there must be too much Jesus for him. <laughs> no, it's too many words on the screen. That's what's wrong. If I want to read about Jesus, I read the Bible. I'm going to come to the movie for. I can't stand it. All right, I'm going to tell you what's happening right now. This is the second show. Problem when you do more than one show in the same day, you kind of forget which jokes you've done and you haven't done. <laughs> and I'm trying to remember, have I done this joke? Because if I haven't done it, I'm going to be mad that I didn't put it on the DVD. And if I have done it, y'all going to look at me like I'm on crack. 
So um, I'm going to start this joke. And if I have done this joke, I can hear anybody else tell me I have done it already except for you. <laughs> you have reached your quota of help for the night, okay? <laughs> she said that's what he said, huh? Husband. I actually think I did the joke uh, about the dog lovers. I didn't do the joke about the dog lovers? Okay. <laughs> that's good then. Matter of fact, okay, good. Good. Oh, that's right. I was supposed to go back and do the uh, uh, steal my car and gas joke that y'all didn't think was funny. <laughs> you gonna fold your arms on me on it? Okay. Um, but let me get to that. But I got to share something with y'all. Uh, I'm on Facebook. I got a fan page. I would love for you guys to be on my fan page. But I got to tell you about something that happened that bothered me. Okay, when I hosted The View, I had a great time. It was so much fun. All the women were like, Bone, we want you to succeed. We're going to help you however we can. They were like cool and commercial break before and after. I had so much fun. So on Facebook, I'm like, I had so much fun on The View. This was the greatest time ever. I had retarded fun. And then somebody put on there, don't use the R word. It's offensive. I'm like, um, here's my problem. Not that he's telling me don't say retarded because it's offensive. He said, don't use the R word. When did retarded become the R word? Okay, in comedy, negative words are positive words. When you say somebody is funny, you're like, he's so stupid. He is such a fool. That means he did a good job. So when you say, I had retarded fun, you mean it in a good way. But I get it. If it's an offensive word, I get it. You're supposed to tell me. But how did it become a one-letter word? You know what? We use one-letter words to describe the most offensive words that start with that letter. Everybody is clear what that letter means. If I say right now, you know he called me the N-word last week. Everybody know what I'm talking about. I'm black, and I still just said the N-word. If you say, he said the F-word in church, everybody know, oh, he said the F-word, oh, oh, my goodness. If I said, don't use the R-word, everybody in here be like, what is the R-word? <laughs> well, you know he don't like to read, so maybe, you know, you ain't supposed to say read up in here or something like that. Don't use the R-word. Got people doing fake chokes for nothing. Don't use the R word. Oh, wait, wait a minute, what's the R word? What? I'm like, no, no. You got to tell you something about your dog lovers too. You got to stop walking your dogs with no leashes. Because I'm scared. <laughs> and I'm tired of you looking at me like something wrong with me. Like I'm overreacting when I see your dog come around the corner without a leash. And I'm defending myself the only way I know how, which is loud and verbally. Get your dog! You better get your dog! In the name of Jesus, get your dog! <laughs> What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you, big black man? <laughs> Muffin don't bite! <laughs> Muffin don't bite! Well, I don't know Muffin don't bite. Okay, all I see is a German Shepherd come running at me free. It would be the same as if you see me running with a gun and no bullets. What's wrong? Why you tripping? Muffin don't bite. Muffin don't bite. And then you name your dogs wrong too. Okay, your name is supposed to match your dog. Coming to your house, you're like, hey, you want to meet Cupcake? <laughs> All right, cool, I'll meet Cupcake. Cupcake is a werewolf! <laughs> you need to name that dog Cujo. <laughs> a 
Okay, well, the people laughing, tell the people not laughing who Cujo is <laughs> so they can be in on the joke. It's like meeting a white dude named Jamal. <laughs> hey, that's my time. I'm bound to have to. Thank you very much. Thank you.